Hey everybody, welcome back to the Proof Cooking. So today I'm going to be making a chicken parm sandwich. I'm pretty sure it's my favorite sandwich, like, ever. There's a restaurant near where I work, about 10 minutes away, and I honestly think I eat there about at least once a week. I absolutely love chicken parms. So that's why I decided to make one for the channel today. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so to make the chicken parm, we're going to start off by making the sub roll, or hero roll, or hoagie roll. I know there's a couple different names for them, but I typically call it a sub roll. So, into the bowl of your stand mixer, you're going to add in one and a third cups of warm water. I had mine heated to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we're going to add in two and a quarter teaspoons of dry active yeast. Throw in a pinch of white granulated sugar to feed the yeast and get it blooming. It'll take about 10 minutes for it to get nice and foamy. Here, I'll show you what it's going to look like. As you can see there, it's nice and foamy. Look at that. That means your yeast is alive. That's what you want to see. So anyways, back to making these rolls. Into the bowl of your stand mixer, add in three and a half cups of bread flour, and then you're going to add in two tablespoons of white granulated sugar. From there, add in one teaspoon of kosher salt, and then drop the head of your stand mixer with the dough hook attachment, and start mixing this on a medium speed. While you're mixing it, you're going to add in a quarter cup of unsalted butter, melted or just, you know, the room temperature so that it's easy to work with. Add that into the bowl of the stand mixer. You may need to scrape along the sides of the bowl, but mix this all together for about seven, eight minutes until you get a nice, smooth and consistent dough. Look at that. So remove it from the bowl and it's ready to be worked with. So what we're going to do now is just work the dough into a nice hot ball. So on your work surface, just press down on the dough, turning it, pressing your hands down towards the table until you get a nice hot ball of dough like I have here. Now I'm going to set this aside for a moment and grab myself a large bowl like this one here and we're going to throw either some cooking spray in it or some olive oil because we're going to throw the dough in there and let it rise for a couple of hours and you need the cooking spray or the olive oil in order for the dough not to stick to the walls of the bowl. So swirl the dough around in the oil, cover this with some plastic wrap and then throw it in a warm dry space to rise. You should look for it to double in size, typically takes two hours. Now, while the dough is rising, let's make a good tomato sauce for the chicken parm. So into a pot, throw a 28 ounce can of San Marzano tomatoes. Then I'm going to add in about three tablespoons of tomato paste, scoop that all in. From there, we're going to add in some spices, a tablespoon of oregano, a tablespoon of dried basil, then I'm going to add in a tablespoon of white granulated sugar to cut down on the acidity of the tomatoes. And then I'm going to add in some freshly crushed garlic, three cloves to be exact. So you just crush the cloves in. These are kind of a pain in the ass because they're really, really big cloves that I was using. But anyway, just crush the cloves of garlic in. Then I'm going to add in a few pinches of kosher salt and a couple twists of freshly ground black pepper for taste. From there, I'm going to get my immersion blender and mix this all together until it's all blended up up and combined. Now you don't have to use an immersion blender, you can either use a food processor or a regular blender, those work too. From there I'm going to add in half of a red onion diced up finely and fried. Now normally I would use white onions, but I didn't have any at home so I opted to use red onions. I'm sure it'll taste just fine. But anyways, mix this all together and you're going to throw it on a burner on a medium heat and let it simmer for 30 minutes to thicken up. Now, back to the dough. As you can see, it's clearly doubled in size, so take the plastic wrap off and give it a little punch to deflate it. Probably my favorite part about working with dough. Then you're going to flour yourself a work surface and it's time to start dividing this dough up. Now what you're going to want to do is weigh the dough to see how much it weighs. Mine weighed 36 ounces, so I'm going to divide it up into six balls of dough at six ounces each so that we get nice evenly sized buns. There we go, like that. Now, to roll these out, it's pretty straightforward. Flour your work surface yet again, then get one of your dough balls and press it out with your hands until it's a circle about, you know, five, six inches in size. And then from there, you're going to roll the dough just into itself, making like a dough log. You're making a roll after all, right? Like that. And then you're just going to pinch the seam of the dough so that there's no seam on it or, you know, to the best of your ability. And then you're going to roll it out by hand until it's about a foot long you know, like a 12 inch sub roll. There you go, look at that, something like that. 
So then go get your baking sheet, line it with some parchment paper, and lay all of the rolls down on top. There we go. Then you're going to cover it with some plastic wrap and stick this back in a warm, dry space for another hour to let the rolls proof. They are going to rise a bit more again. You ideally want them to double in size, so you know, about another hour or so. There you go. That's what they're going to look like after proofing. So, one final step before we bake these, get yourself a knife or a bread lame and cut yourself a line down the center of your rolls about an eighth of an inch in depth. From there, you're going to preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit and bake these for anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes until they come out golden brown and crispy looking like that. Man, those look good. So anyways, I'm going to let these cool down on a wire rack, but they are piping hot, so maybe let them cool down in the baking sheet first before you transfer them to a wire rack. <laughs> but don't those look good? Man, I'm really happy with how those turned out. But yeah, let them cool down for like an hour or two before you use them. Now, onto the chicken. I've got two large chicken breasts here, and I'm just gonna cut off that little inch piece there. And then I'm going to butterfly both of these because they're too thick to fry as is. So we wanna thin these out a little bit. So I've butterflied both of them, but we're still going to pound all of these out. And we're going to do it in the Ziploc bag. So grab yourself a Ziploc bag and in a piece of your chicken, and then get like a meat mallet or a rolling pin like I have here, and smash these out until they're between an eighth of an inch in a quarter inch in thickness. Now the reason why we're flattening these out is so that they cook evenly when frying them. If they were thicker they wouldn't fry evenly, the batter would blacken before the chicken was cooked properly, but as you can see they thin out quite nicely quite easily. So do that with all of your chicken just like I have here and then it's time to start battering these. Okay so in the three pie plates to the left we have all-purpose flour, to the right we have Italian breadcrumbs and in the final pie plate we're going to add in two large eggs so just crack them in and you know what don't put in eggshells like I did here or if you do make sure you pick them out. There we go. And then we're also going to add in one cup of whole milk. Then I'm just going to get either a whisk or a fork and mix this until it's all combined. And now it's time to start battering our chicken. So what we're going to do is take one of the pieces of chicken, throw it in the all-purpose flour, make sure it's nice and coated. Then we're going to dunk it in the egg and milk mixture. Again, make sure it's nice and coated. And then we're going to take it and dunk it in the Italian breadcrumbs. It's a pretty easy process, just give it a quick flip once it's covered on the first side. Now what I'll typically do is just toss some of the breadcrumbs to make sure it's completely coated. You want to make sure that it's completely breaded. But yeah, that's really easy, so do that with all of your pieces of chicken. Now I don't know if you can see this here, but your fingers will get caked with breadcrumbs and flowers, so it is kind of a pain in the ass. But the end goal is a delicious chicken parm sandwich, so it's worth it. So let's go into the kitchen and start frying these. Now I'm going to shallow fry these, so I have my large 12 inch cast iron skillet. I threw in about an inch depth of vegetable oil and I've heated it up to about 325, 330 degrees Fahrenheit. And then I'm just going to fry a couple pieces of chicken at a time, just not to overload the frying pan and to not drop the temperature of the frying oil too quickly. And then you're just going to fry them for about two to three minutes per side until the chicken gets nice and golden and crispy. Now if you're concerned with cooking the chicken, you can always check the internal temperature with an instant read thermometer. As long as it reaches 165 degrees Fahrenheit, you know it's cooked. And really, it, it's pretty straightforward. It only takes two to three minutes per side to cook this chicken. Now I'm going to throw the pieces of chicken on a wire rack and set it in my oven heated at 250 degrees Fahrenheit just to keep the chicken warm while I fry all the last remaining pieces. So just repeat the process. Drop the chicken into the frying oil and fry for two to three minutes per side until it's all completed and it's nice and golden brown looking like that. Now we're almost ready to assemble the sandwich, but I'm just going to throw the chicken back in the oven for a quick minute and go tend to the bread. What I'm going to do is take two tablespoons of unsalted butter and I'm going to crush in two cloves of garlic. We're going to make a garlic parm butter that we're going to spread on our bread and it's going to be amazing. Then I'm going to add in about a teaspoon of garlic powder. This is going to be nice and garlicky after all. And then I'm going to shred in some Parmesan cheese, you know, as much as you want. I don't think there is too much in this case. From there I'm going to mix this all together and then you've got some garlic parm butter to put on your bread. It's going to be so good. So let's start assembling this sandwich. Get yourself one of your sub rolls, look at that, and then cut it down the center very carefully, very carefully. Carefully, there we go and look at that then we're going to spread some butter on the top side of it we're not going to do it on the bottom side because that's where all of the chicken and everything's gonna go and speaking of the chicken it's time to start saucing it up so I'm just going to take the pieces of it and dunk it in the tomato sauce making sure it's nice and coated and then from there I'm going to place it on the bottom part of the sub roll 
Now, I don't know about you, but I like my chicken parms fairly stacked, so I'm going to load it up with a couple pieces of the chicken there, and then I'm going to just cover it head to toe in sliced mozzarella cheese. Look at that, it's, yeah, it's completely covered. And then last but not least, I'm going to shred some Parmesan on top of both the bun and on top of the mozzarella as well. From there, I'm going to add it back onto my wire rack, crank the heat up on my broiler to high, and I'm going to set this under it for about one to two minutes until the bun comes out golden and toasty and all the cheese is melted. Let's assemble this by putting the top bun on and oh my God, this looks so good. Let's set that aside for a moment and look at that. There is a chicken parm. Oh man, I am so excited and surprise, surprise, Rose has come to inspect, but look at that. There's the interior shot of the sandwich. Oh man. Oh man, that is gorgeous. That's so gorgeous. This was a lot of fun to make and look at the end product. Look at how good this chicken parm looks. You know what, let's go in for a taste test and yeah, with the first bite, wow, was that good. It was so tasty. The chicken was just perfectly fried and it was rich and flavorful with that delicious tomato sauce on there. All of that mozzarella cheese and the Parmesan. Like, Look at the cheese, it's nice and stretchy and the bun was nice and soft but crunchy on the outside. Honestly, I couldn't have asked for a better chicken parm sandwich. This was so good, so good. But anyways, that is the end of the episode like always. If you like what you saw here today, why don't you drop me a comment, like the video, or even subscribe to the channel. Thanks again for watching Idiot Proof Cooking. We'll see you again soon.